Okay, so what I want to do here is just revisit the, you know, the, you know, the art of bending wire or the practice of it. Uh, let me first say that um, when you first start out, like your branch structure, you know, maybe isn't going to look, you know, the way you want it to. Like, um, and it doesn't matter anyway, because like it's all scale relative. Like, for example, like these are kind of background pieces. Like you can still sort of see the twist in the wire there, but I don't really care because by the time I layer these and you know they're kind of in the background and depending on scale, etc., uh, like it doesn't matter, right? Okay. Uh, if you get like you know above H O to O and then you know one twenty four scale, one thirty fifth scale, then it's all relative to what time you want to put into modeling the branches and etc., which I show over and over again throughout. Uh, you know, select videos on tree construction because I think there's always a uh, call for showing how it's done because the the practice evolves. Like I never invented this; I picked this up from uh, you know European uh, modelers, right? I think they were doing it first, and and uh, so they've always. Uh, been sort of the backbone of this particular practice, I think, in terms of building trees. So trees to me are models, right? So if you treat them like a model or a sculpture, you'll end up with a nice tree. And I mean, if you want to build 20, 30 trees the way you want to do them with skewers and, you know, furnace filter, that's fine. That has a place as well. But I'm talking more about a fine scale tree, an actual character modeled tree, like you would model a figurine or a model kit. I treat model trees as kits, right? And I want to show you just um, quickly how to do a basic branch, okay? So this is a uh, 26 gauge wire, which would be this here, then there's 24, 22, there's, there's uh, 28, you know, there's jeweler's wire. So there's all the variations of thickness of wire that you can use to create like diversity in a in a branch or a limb okay and this is what you'll end up with with uh, this type of thing or this okay and they're all like relative to the scale like I can use either one of these for any scale right so I'll give you an example so this can be for an old growth tree in HO scale because they're huge some limbs on on like Douglas firs or you can twist this this way because they're wire like that okay you can turn it like that and you can turn it into like bend these out spread them out fan them out you can turn it into just a deciduous bush too or you can take two or three twist the bottom and turn them into a little maple or alder or whatever, see? So that, so the actual practice of the default armature that I'm going to show you quick is applicable to any type of tree or any scale of tree. Like in 124 scale, like these can be lower branches on a big old growth tree, right? Or they're big main branches on HO, that kind of thing. And everything else in between, like 135th scale, 132, whatever, even 116th scale, right? That's the beauty of the default wire armature okay and i'll just show you with this 28 gauge there's many ways to do this but i find uh, uh that this way works good so just just take a straight wire just stretch out a whole bunch of straight wire grab it in your hand like this and then just just wrap it around two three four five six like that and then just snip off the top so you have both ends up there and you got this loop like this, see? And then take the loop and just close it here and then just twist this end. There are other people that are doing this, but I think the opportunity of social media is great because it, you can see the same thing over and over again, 101 different ways, and I need to see them all <laughs> before I get it sometimes. But anyway... So see there, that's all I've done, right? Is I've twisted that like that. Now, take, don't worry about these trailers because they'll be branches. Now take your loop, but don't, but don't cut it in the middle. Cut it maybe 
off to the side right there so that you have some longer ones, see? Okay? See that? You can leave that loop on there because it acts as a little hand, hand holder, okay? Now, all you do is you take, like, okay, so let's just take these four and let's just twist those. And if you find it hard with your fingers, like, just get a pair of pliers, needle nose or just flat pliers, and just give it a twist like that. And then break off a few more, like, leave one trailer. Take those three, twist those as well, okay? And then leave off another trailer and then twist a few more times. And there's one branch right there, see? Okay? And don't worry at first, you know, oh, geez, this looks horrible, because that's just the way it is. It's just part of the learning curve. But before you know it, you'll be twisting up beautiful limbs and branches or trees before you know it right like once you get into it put on your favorite podcast favorite music whatever if, you know whatever conditions you like when you model and then just go for it and then give it a twist there's one there i'll take these three leave that one behind leave those three leave that one leave that one and there you go see and you can also do this. You can take that and make a loop like this, that long one, if you leave them long. And then you can just wrap that around like this. And then take the loop like that and then give it a twist as well a couple times. And then come in and snip it and pull it off. Okay? So there you have a very nice looking little branch that you can, you know cover in glue i like to use matte medium because it's flexible see so these were done with matte medium and then you can sprinkle on really fine sawdust or oxide sand works really well i've shown that before fine 300 grit oxide sand you can get from metal shops or just google it up You'll, you can find it like badger airbrushes made it for their air erasers many years ago it's, it's fine oxide you just you just wet this down with matte medium 50 50 or straight and then just sprinkle oxide sand and it just leave, it covers up all the wire twists beautifully and then look at this i can bend it this is oxide sand with matte medium and it won't crack and break I just want to add this in uh, because I think it's important about the uh, status of paint in terms of ratio. Like when you initially mix paint, right, there's a ratio, but that all begins to change as soon as you start painting. You got room temperature, you got your lights, you know, which affects temperature. You got your solvent, whether it's water, mineral spirits with oil, water with acrylic you know, whatever, right? Like learn to feel the paint, right? Like learn to feel it. Have a bit of water around the thick pigment and then just learn to feel it as you go. Um, and how do you learn to feel it? Well, practice. <laughs> well, you know, there's a lot of technicality around model building. Almost some of it's unnecessary or almost uh, kind of OCD kind of, hyper analytical just, just model <laughs> you know like just build a model like i used to build kits i just build kits and not even paint them or just build a kit straight from the box and then paint it like throw paint on it just to learn every model you build or every part that you paint or whatever becomes part of the greater whole of the learning curve right that's the way you have to look at it like 
and you can read all the books you want, watch all the videos you want, and then think in your head you got it, but you don't have anything. <laughs> That's just a, it's just a figment of your imagination. If you want to make it real and translate it to the tactile result, you got to practice. Any modeler that's been in the game long enough will tell you that, if they're true to themselves. If you want to get good at something, you got to practice it. You can't teach experience. You have to gain experience by actually doing the task, right? 